Hello everyone and welcome back to more reading TTRPG horror stories. I'm Duke and this is Wife. I am Wife. And we got some juicy stories for you today. He was reading them last night and he's like, boy, oh. are you ready for tomorrow? And I was like, no. Let's do it. Yeah, here we go. So again, us reading these stories, our feedback is to hopefully provide advice on how to avoid situations like this and just make TTRPG just a better space in general. Or if you just like drama, here's your drama. Yeah, absolutely, day. here we go. <laughs> so right off the bat, this first story is my players keep arguing with me. Every time I make a call and it doesn't go their way, they butt heads with me. I get pissed after repetitions over the last session and take a break mid game. Come back and explain. Most receive well, except for the main problem player, Rogue Lock, the Rogue Warlock. Group level nine from level one. It's been over one year. Rogue Warlock Bard, long story. Then we have a Rogue, a Twilight Cleric, Barbarian Fighter, Barbarian Two, and then Druid. The Rogue Lock and Cleric are the biggest culprits. For example, last session, my breaking point, the players get back to Lakeside Town and find it flooded and being attacked by water elementals. In combat with those, they ask what time it is. I say probably about 4 p.m. They proceed to argue that would be sunset with the logic that it's winter. I say our sun sets at like 8. They say, but it's summer and the sun sets early in winter. I say, yeah, but not by four hours, etc. After combat, they go to the water's edge and can see that the center of the lake is shooting out a torrent of water. Portal to the elemental plane opened at the bottom. They find a large rowboat and head there. Druid has to go back to his house for a bit for valid reasons. After a while, they get into combat with a high power crocodile that I found called the Dracodile. It has an attack that grapples a creature and you are hit by it but it has a low escape DC. They call bullshit and try to make an acrobatics check or something to get away from it. I say no. They push more and more. After a round or two, their boat is broken and I try to do a bile spit attack like a black dragon's breath weapon and they call bu bullshit again saying it would just disperse in the water. I get pissed because the rogue lock is talking to me like I'm a child slash moron. So I say, you know what? F this, we are taking a break. I sit in my chair and scroll on my phone while Rogue Lock and Rogue play on the Xbox and the others disperse. Cleric is apologetic. Druid gets back after about 25 minutes and I call everyone back to the table. I tell everyone that sometimes I might make a bad call. You are allowed to say something about it, but if we can't agree within a few seconds, drop it and we will talk about it later. I don't care what you think should happen. A lot of these times I have to make my own rules because of the stuff I let you guys do outside of 5e rules. And that's not easy. Everyone seemed to agree, but Rogue Lock avoids eye contact and just shakes his head while messing with dice. They used to be a lot worse stealing from each other all the time and doing PVP, which I stopped with a speech like this. I don't think this is going to be a fix though. I'm not asking a specific <clears throat> question. I just needed to vent. So with this one, People are immediately saying that dungeon masters need to explain to their players that they are not trying to compete with each other. They are not trying to compete against their players. The dungeon master is not trying to outsmart the players. The dungeon master is not out to get the players. The dungeon master is there to help guide the players throughout the story and they throw challenges along the way. The dungeon master is the storyteller. The dungeon master is also the navigator. And yes, like what he said, there are times where you will make bad calls as a dungeon master. I've made bad calls as a dungeon master and people have called me out for it and I go, oh, you're right. And we move on. Or I go, eh, let's just do it this way. And they go, okay. And we move along with it. This guy seems to have made some good explanation with how to go about this, but Again, the rogue lock, I personally think this is a teenage group, just from the sounds of it, especially the part where once we took a break, they, they went immediately went and played Xbox. <laughs> hey, adults do that too. Adults do that too. That sounds very much like a teenager thing to it, do. It's valid. Two things. To the point of how the DM handled it, I thought that was handled very well as far as we need to take a break. Yeah. Let's come back and have a conversation. I yeah. mean, I, it doesn't sound like there was a conversation. He got to say what he wanted to say. There wasn't much discussion, but I also think at that point, point the two individuals that were causing the most quote-unquote problems were probably like their coping mechanism is probably like i don't want to talk about it right now like 
that I'm not going to be listened to. Or I, you know, there could be all these different things in it where they probably didn't agree or say anything yeah. because they were like, I'm over this, you know? Um, and so, but my other thing too, though, is when it comes to players and the um actuallys, <laughs> um, I do it. I think it is totally appropriate sometimes. I think the um actuallys become not okay when they become rule nazis or rule lords or whatever you want to yeah. call it right like whatever phrase out there as far as the hard cool core rule followers go there needs to be an understanding that sometimes the dm does have to just make something up yeah. because there's no dungeon master is making something up what? what no because as we all well know dungeons and dragons has rules but they don't have rules so there needs to be that understanding there but it's just how you approach it like yeah if you're approaching it in a way where it's very like, um, actually you're wrong and we should do it this way, that's never going to go well. If no. it's, um, actually, hey, like, have we thought about this or would this be cool? Or, oh, did you actually, like, did you look at this? Or, yeah. I don't know. It's always going to happen. I'm not saying players shouldn't be, um, right. actually, because sometimes you do need to check in and sometimes the DM's like, oh, yeah, no, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, sure, that works. Yeah. Or rule of cool. Like, I don't know. They, right. You just kind of got to blend with it. But if you, it's all about the intention, it sounds like this DM was fed up with these people's intention and how they were doing it. Right. And kind of reiterating what you're saying, if you approach a problem with aggression, it's not going to get solved. Usually when that happens, the the aggressor gets everyone else aggressive and will not take any other answer besides the answer they want to hear. Yeah. Nine times out of 10, that's usually what happens. What you need to do to approach it is talk and explain and ju just talk it out and figure out what is happening. So in this case, again, the dungeon master was just doing his job. The players thought they were targeting him. The players definitely could handle it a lot better. There does need to be more communication about it and retelling your players, hey, I'm here to help the story, not have a butting heads about any of this. I'm not trying to compete against you. To this point, though, with the crocodile thing, it sounded like a pretty dope crocodile. Yeah, it's a freaking dope crocodile. So, like, the fact that they were calling BS, it's like, do you want me to show you the stats? Like, right. I don't... Yeah. What? Like, Oh, and last but not least, sorry, I'm going to totally interrupt you. Rude. I know. Another thing that they said is, as a dungeon master, it's okay to say no. It is okay to tell your players no. It is okay to have suggestions brought to you and you say no. It's okay to have role-playing suggestions be told no. That's going to come up soon. So so conclusion, approach things with a, a, a good mindset and... Have a good understanding with your dungeon master and the players and your role as the dungeon master and their roles as the players. This one is titled, Too Stupid to Dodge Attacks. So I hopped into a short only war campaign halfway through, very stereotypical lineup, including someone playing dumb brute kind of character. Most of the players were fine. I knew almost all of them already. The DM was doing great for what was essentially her first time running a game, but the brute was a nightmare. To be frank, I think he wanted to play an Ogryn, an incredibly stupid ogre-like spinoff of humanity, and been told he wasn't allowed to. So he circumvented this by playing a regular human, pumped his strength up to an insane degree, and playing him like an incredible dumbass. For most of the campaign, this was irritating but tolerable. Our heavy weapons specialist just picked up the radiated object, sure, whatever, get him to the med bay. We showed increasing frustration as he tried to turn everything into three stooges, slapstick, and eventually the DM pulled him aside about actively hampering the party and messing with the tone of the game, and he promised to knock it off. But the campaign's finale, a madcap dash to evacuate our ship as it's ravaged by dark elder boarding parties was the worst. We were already off to a bad start because he caught him launching Jurassic World Evolution as the DM was opening the session, and he sheepishly explained he got bored waiting for his turn. So after the gentlest possible chewing out, he closes his game and the DM continues describing how explosions rock the ship and the hallways are crawling with alien invaders. The party quickly figures out a plan to use the maintenance shaft to avoid getting caught, prying open an access hatch so we can rush to the evacuation shuttles before a limited time frame to escape runs out. All in all, it's not a bad plan. The brute describes how he ignores the rest of the party funneling into the hatch and instead ran down the main corridor that he knew 
was an ambush site. He brushes off our attempts to stop him and describes running down the corridor for no particular reason. The DM narrates a bolt of enemy fire lose loosing at him and asking for a dodge roll for some for those not familiar with the system this is an automatic part of what happens when you get hit in only war it's the equivalent to rolling a deck save in 5e the brute says that he's too stupid to know he needs to dodge attacks and insists the dm let him take the damage straight up you'd be forgiven at this point for assuming the brute was just trying to suicide his character we certainly thought so but when the party impassively watched him run down the corridor they told him not to go down get shot and keep running forward we shrugged our shoulders and turned to leave down the maintenance shaft and he panicked he went from, ha, 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 I'm too dumb to know what danger is, to running as fast as he could back towards our exit and taking cover. It turns out his shenanigans were entirely based upon him assuming we throw ourselves into the fire to rescue him from the danger he put himself in. And once he realized we wouldn't, he remembered what self-preservation was. He managed to escape into the maintenance tunnels with the rest of us and stayed mostly quiet for the rest of the finale. So this guy is an instigator is what we like to call him. Kind of on the same level of main character syndrome, but just a level beneath like he wants to be the reason why the party does certain things. And But in this sense, he wanted to have the party follow whatever his instigation was. Once he found out that the party was not into it, he was like, oh, OK. And then just totally wasn't into the game anymore. Wait, was he being the Three Stooges kind of guy? Yeah. This is the Three Stooges kind of dude. I mean, that's almost, I guess, instigator. That almost aligns up with, like, class clown kind of vibe. Nothing against class clowns. Huge fan of them if done right. Again, it's all about, like, a player's intention. Mm -hmm. I'm sure he wanted to have a good time, but, in like, he ended up trying to take the game into his own hands to make it a certain way that was entertaining for him, mm -hmm. which is totally, you know, understandable. A lot of people all the time will make offhand comments or, like, want to make their party laugh and stuff. But, yeah, in a situation like this, it's kind of like, understand your role as your character like, just one of those things where it was like he he was not gonna win that situation no he wasn't <laughs> no i mean i i feel like he should have realized already that people were not gonna follow him or try to save him yeah. because he ran for no apparent reason if his party knew like oh you're trying to go back and get something or oh we forgot something or you need to save someone mm -hmm. absolutely we're gonna jump in but if you're just like i'm just gonna run back oh oh Okay. Yeah. You really expect me to go after you after you said I'm just going to go back? Like, if he changed it to a suicide <laughs> mission to save face, should have done that. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I mean, it's just, it's just, I think if he was with a different group of people, it would have worked great. But if this was not the people, it's like, no, it's not the people. Like, I'm not saying what he did was bad. I'm just saying it wasn't the right place, right time, right group kind of thing. You summed up what I was going to say. I was like, it's probably not the right group for him to play in. Yep. Like, I love those characters. It's fun to just do stupid things like that. But this this group was taking it seriously while he wasn't taking it very seriously. Yes. That's probably the best way to sum it up. And I do understand the habit of opening up a game when combat is ran. Combat <sighs> takes forever. And it's not very exciting when it's not your turn. Like, yes, I understand pulling things up and getting ready, but it sounded like he pulled up the Jurassic World game right as they started. I don't know. I, I might have read that wrong. We can only assume so We much. can only assume so. Yeah, we can only assume so much. He does it I'm at fault at that as well. Like, when combat's going, I'll check social media. I'll do things because it's just like, I, I play all the martial fighters. I like my bunk people. So my rounds take like one minute and then we're done. Because it's just like, okay, I'm going to bunk and then bunk really hard. And then that's it. But then yeah. we get to everyone else who's like playing spell casters and whatnot. And everyone's trying to figure out the, the mechanics of the spell and things. And it just takes about 15 minutes to get back to your turn. And you're just kind of like, yeah, I get that part. There, There's a time and place to pull up the phone. But not when you just start. Like that. that's not a good look. And this is also a time where going back to the last story. Telling this, the funny, stupid guy that he was playing, this is a perfect time to just say no. Yeah. Like, this is a good time to just say, no, I'm not gonna allow you to do that. He, I mean, the DM could have easily been like, if he said, hey, I wanna run back, it's like, cool, like, why? You know, like, the DM can yeah. ask why, like, what's your purpose? Because that also helps the DM with role playing, too. Exactly. Of, <clears throat> okay, tell me what your intentions are, what you're wanting to do. And if he doesn't come up with anything, it's like, okay, great, the doors are closed, you can't go. Like, that's your way of saying no, or yeah. like, 
no, we're not going to do that because that's not like you just have no purpose. That doesn't make sense. Right. Like the DM can even kind of call out a little bit and be like, no, You're absolutely right. not. <laughs> so consensus, read your players. It's okay to be an instigator, but no when to be an instigator know when it's appropriate every every D group need or every group in general needs an instigator there needs to be someone who pushes the story forward this person was doing it in the wrong way with the wrong group that's that's all we're saying yeah i'm all for crazy shenanigans right i do it all the time my character but is notorious for it it needs to make sense yeah and and it needs to be something that can be playable with and something that's not a suicide mission for everybody else right <laughs> go team so this next one. Wait, we're doing three? Yes. Whoa. This next I one. So weird. don't cover your face. Be I'm confident. gonna cover my face. When we when we started this, this was to mainly help people avoid situations and to and to make sure everyone has a good time, right? right. We wanna give advice. This is this is what it's for. And every, every there's a story for everything. And this makes them very <sighs> uncomfortable, apparently. Can you just this, read it now? And sadly, this is a story that does need to be said because this is important to talk about. This is a very important aspect to talk about. Content warning. <gasps> Some weird sex stuff and bestiality. Okay, let's read. Here we go. I promise, <laughs> I promise this is going to be good. And it's going to have a good message by the end of it. Just hold on to your pillow. Read <laughs> okay, read it with the greatest straight face you can. I can't. Oh, I'm this is called the Puppy Master. Ooh. I felt the need to post this mostly just to get it out. We had a character join our established group to make the numbers up when our rogue had to leave due to having a new baby, and it all <clears throat> went really sideways. Content warning: weird sex stuff, bestiality. The cast, Dungeon Master, our regular DM who's been running our game for a couple years, Cleric, Rogue's husband, who is a friend of DM, mostly focuses on a support role, Fighter, longtime friend of mine and DM, likes to play a frontline warrior, keeping enemies away from us, Wizard, this is me, standard supportive Wizard, Ranger, the new guy, found him online and vetted him before adding him to the party, likes to play, well, you'll see. The first few sessions with the new guy went fine, he was playing a Beastmaster Ranger with a large dog as his companion, the dog would run forward and aid our fighter whilst he stayed back with me and shot arrows. He always made a fuss of the dog after any encounter and really made it feel like a character. It was cute. Our fourth session with him, the cleric returned. He had not been able to come due to being a new dad for a while. He gives us an update on Rogue and says that once she feels ready, they'll be taking turns playing as his cleric. So they both get to play and parent. Everyone is cool with that. They're both great. This is the session where Ranger starts to get weird. It's a less combat heavy session when the previous few and a large amount of it is spent in an inn planning our next move in the campaign while sat around a table. Cleric is explaining what he'd learned from his order while he was away and filling us in on some plot details the DM had given him, the in-game reason for his absence. The ranger seems to be in listening intently. Then he just scribbles something down and slips a note to the DM. DM looks a little confused and says, dog rubs his head against your hand. Ranger interrupts, ranger interrupts, quote, her, comma, dog is a bitch, end quote. I don't understand one. The DM nods and Claire continues. Ranger points something out on the map, but tells us all he wipes his hand on his jerkin before touching the map so it doesn't get sticky. DM sighs, but Ranger's insight is useful and we continue. A little while later, while I'm talking about something magical, Ranger passes another note to the DM who says, I guess you can, dog seems to like it and wags her tail. The questioning tone in the DM's voice had me concerned and I asked if I noticed what's going on. DM has me roll a perception and tells me Ranger has his hand under the table and you can see his arm moving. You softly hear dog making some sort of sound. Ah! Ah! I decided not to pry any further and get got back to the game, asking Fighter what they made of my plan. Ranger interrupts at this point. His contribution is good. The RP is good, but he starts it with, I wipe my hands on my jerkin before picking up the condiments and spoons and using them as props to explain. At this point, it's a little off-putting and I don't know why he keeps drawing attention to it. 
That session ends, and after I talked to the fighter and clerk about it and asked if they thought it was weird, they said yes, and fighter said they thought Ranger was a dog lover in more ways than one. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Cleric said he hoped Ranger would just pack it in. Next session, and we are engaging in the plan we decided on last time. There's a lot of stealthily creeping around, and at one point, Ranger and Dog, being our scout, move ahead alone. When they return after a short 10-minute private RP session with the DM, we are both told both Ranger and Dog are returned dirty, marked with grass stains, but looking satisfied. I catch Fighter's eye, and they make a s sickening face. Then the game continues. The ranger informs us that after forcing his way through a tight passage where he, he really had to squeeze, he had managed to find an entrance to the castle. It's not far, and he leads us off that way. The rest of the session proceeds as planned. I receive a message from Fighter not long after the session. He just says, why is he role-playing effing his dog? To which I just replied, he better stop or I'm going to have to have a word with DM. This isn't what we signed up for. The following session rolls around and we start the session coming out of a long rest. Ranger is an elf and has been downstairs in the common room all night with Dog because he doesn't sleep and doesn't need a bed. This is the first session with Rogue back playing Cleric's character. As Rogue as Cleric enters the room, the DM says Ranger is sat at the table looking kind of blissed out of his eyes unfocused. Dog is nowhere to be seen. Ranger passes DM a note. At this point, I'm on high alert for some really weird dog-related shit. Sure enough, dog dashes out from under the table, muzzle wet with something, which causes Ranger to snap back into the room and see Rogue as Cleric standing there. Just as dog jumps up and licks her face, Ranger says, she likes you. Don't worry, she's really affectionate when you get to know her, and winks. At this point, I had enough, but I kept my mouth shut and made it through the rest of the session. Rogue was not impressed, to say the least, so afterwards, when we told her what had been going on, she was grossed out and joined the rest of us and asking the DM to boot Ranger from the group. He was disinvited, and we didn't have to see his dog loving face again. I read that, and I tried so hard to find some explanation about this and the only thing i have to say about that is there are you are playing a fantasy game but this is not the time to play fantasy if that makes any sense again if there's a group out there that role plays this stuff by all means this that's your life yeah, go for it your just again like i said before time place people if it's the time place and the right people absolutely do whatever the whatever you want i do not judge when it comes to that stuff because it's like look you're all whatever you guys agreed to it not my monkey not my circus right but not my dog not my table <laughs> <laughs> but if you're in that situation where obviously these people did not sign up for that don't do it. It makes everybody extremely uncomfortable. The right. fact that the DM let it go that far, I would have said no right off the bat. Like after that first slip of paper, I would have afterwards been like, what is, so what's the goal here? And if they somehow explained whatever they were explaining to me, be like, okay, great, not here. Like, unless you want to talk to everybody else and be okay with that and they be okay with that sure i'm more acting uncomfortable and just like absolutely not because it's it's just not it, it's just not in the right <laughs> no. the, the right element no and it's, it's not just, and it's just if you're into that you're into that again no judgment it's just okay great but like not everyone is into that right and again <laughs> that to reiterate Everyone has some type of fantasy that they want to live in. And every, there are times where people want to play out that fantasy. You have to know when it is an acceptable time to play out that fantasy. And I will say, playing role-playing games does not give you the okay right off the bat to play that because you are playing a fantasy game. Things like this need to be discussed and need to be communicated with the Dungeon Master and players. Apparently, the Dungeon Master didn't know about this. 
and <laughs> the ranger just kind of kept slipping paper over. But again, again, Dungeon Masters, this is a time where you say no. <laughs> You say no, you're not going to allow this, or you ask them what's the what's the goal in all of this. Yeah. But at the next point, the players didn't do anything else. They were they were cautious about it, but they they should have brought something up. They should have talked to the player. This should have been a conversation. I just remembered what happened during the one on one session. Oh my gosh, you're right. Oh, uh, I-, I don't want to. Th- Think about that. So that's where it's like. Oh my gosh, the dungeon master just let that happen. <laughs> so. Oh. So the dungeon master. Oh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> no. <laughs> so. so it, it, oh, and then they came back like. Dude, shut up. No. <laughs> no, but that's that's what I'm saying though. Is that would have been the time? I mean, if the dungeon master is into that, maybe we don't know. Maybe he was oh, in gosh. on it and was like, "Yeah, this is great." What if, like if the DM was okay with it, the other players still should have been like, "Okay, wait, we need to have an intervention here and chat about what's going on." Because at that point, either the dungeon master was very like, "Yep, do whatever." Whatever you want, don't care, whatever. I just am happy to be here and be playing like Dungeons and Dragons. That's just one of those like next level of boundaries that need to have a conversation across. Right. So that's where that whole session of just one on one, I am so glad we don't have to hear about it. Why did you have to bring that up? (laughs) Anyway, who do I think is the painted as the bad picture? I personally am going to say the Dungeon Master. Because it just let it happen, and it didn't sound like there was really any communication. I'm not going to fully give the the ranger player the total bad person, because again, it didn't sound like this person got any type of boundary set. They didn't know, and everyone can kind of just let it happen, but the dungeon master was very heavily involved and let this happen, so I'm going to say the dungeon master is at fault here. I'm gonna say it's nobody's fault at this point, and it's just Fair. uncomfortable for everybody. And there should just be assumptions of there's certain boundaries that aren't crossed without a conversation, and that is definitely one of yes. them. And just like that conversation, we're gonna end this conversation. <laughs> Uh, thank you guys so much for participating and watching along with us. It really does mean the world how much you guys do enjoy this series. So again, if you have any D&D, TTRPG, Reddit stories that you guys want us to uh, read off, please go to our Discord and uh, leave us a link in that section with stories that you guys want us to read. But with that, I've been Duke. This has been Wife. And we'll see you in the next episode, Questers. Fairly well. And we'll see you in the next episode, Questers. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>